Well, good morning, everyone. And thank you so much for being with us this morning for a fun announcement. Uh, My name is Linda Childers, for those of you I have not met, and I'm the president and CEO of the Daniels Fund. And I know I speak on on behalf of all of our staff and board that we're really excited about today's announcement. And speaking about board, we have two board members here that I would like to introduce. Dan Ritchie. And June Travis, right here in the front. And if we're successful in, in hooking Tony up by phone, Tony Cohn is, I think you're in California, Tony, but say hello to Tony in California. And we would also like to, to welcome this morning presidents of, of three of the universities in Colorado. We have Joe Blake, who is the, is your title, Chancellor, Pre- Chancellor of Colorado State University, Kate Norton, University of Northern Colorado. And where my other, pre- oh, there we go. And Bruce Benson, I thought, where did he go? I can't see the light. And Bruce from the University of Colorado. So we're very thrilled to have you with us. And many distinguished visitors from the business community to be here for this announcement. So we, we thank you all for, for joining us. And you're going to hear from these distinguished folks in a few minutes, and they'll introduce themselves as they start out. We're trying for the very first time to do a web broadcast conference. So hopefully, if everything is working perfectly, which Peter is giving me the thumbs up, all of our university partners are watching this announcement at their campuses and possibly with local media and and VIPs in their audience as well. So welcome to everybody who's broadcast in here with us. And at the end, Peter tells me there's a chat feature where you can post questions and we can hear the questions here and take them as well. So uh, we'll get started then. Bill Daniels had a reputation for incredible integrity. And it was a reputation that he spent a lifetime building. He also loved business and loved the free enterprise system. So it is no surprise that when Bill Daniels set up his foundation, he gave us direction to work in business ethics at the collegiate level. It's been almost 10 years since Bill passed away, and that's hard to, hard to imagine. But during those 10 years, we have worked with and funded two ethics partnerships at two schools, his beloved Daniels College of Business and the University of Wyoming. And both of those programs have been wild successes. But what we're here today to do is to launch a Bill Daniels or a Daniels Fund ethics initiative and consortium. The board of the Daniels Fund approved seven and a half million dollars to add six additional universities to our consortium of ethics partners. So that will give us eight amazing, amazing people. And we've been meeting with the deans of these schools now for a year, year and a half, talking about this idea, and I think we're all very, very excited. And you're going to hear from each one of them as to how they're going to implement the concepts on their campuses. <clears throat> when you look at Bill Daniels' life, he spent, um, I mean, he, he lived ethics. He did things that were really indicative of what this meant to him. When he returned from the military as a very young man, he went into the insurance business in Casper, Wyoming, and he sold a policy to a warehouse owner there. And a man was killed on the site at the warehouse. And unbeknownst to Bill Daniels, the underwriter had gone out of business prior to this accident. So Bill had no legal responsibility, but in Bill's mind, he had an ethical responsibility. It was a very young man just out of the military, did not have the resources that we No, he had it end of life. He paid the death benefit personally because that's who he was. He owned, one of his dreams was to own a sports team, and he owned the American Basketball Association Utah Stars team. And again, a sad story, in 1975, the team declared bankruptcy, and Bill was devastated. He was devastated that his team didn't win and that this was the situation at the close of business. <clears throat> so they filed bankruptcy. He was released from legal obligation again, left town feeling very, very terrible about the whole thing, went away, made his next million dollars, went back to the university, I mean, went back to Utah and repaid every season ticket holder and every vendor that had lost money believing in his dream with interest. And then he was broke again. But that was what ethics meant to Bill Daniels. And I know Bill worked, and many of you know this story, worked with Dan Ritchie at the University of Denver 
many years ago and put some significant money into recrafting the University of Denver's business approach to have an ethical balance. And Chris will tell you more about how that's turned out 20 years has it been, 20 years later. So when we, when we looked at Bill's life, though, we said it was clearly about principles with Bill, principle-based ethics. So principles are constant foundations for all situations, personal and business. They're what you believe in as a person and what translates into your life. And they provide a framework for personal and organizational decision making. So our goal with the initiative is to help students identify ethical implications of real world situations and to hopefully have the same value and love of the ethical reputation that Bill called his strongest business asset. So to kick us off, Barb Danbaum, our Senior Vice President of Grants, will give you an overview of our objectives and how the initiative will be structured. 